The 2024 Stack Overflow developer survey results are out. I looked through it and much of it is more or less the same stuff. People love Rust, Python and JavaScript are popular, devs make more money in the US, stuff like that. And there are a number of videos out there already analyzing it all, but a few people have asked me for my thoughts on it. So in this video, I wanna share five findings from it that I think are interesting and we can learn from. And before we get started, I do wanna mention that we've put together our own study of the tech market in 2024, from how we got here, where we're headed, what programming languages and technologies are in demand, a look at salaries, viable career paths, and what's to come in the next few years. I'm gonna put a link below where you can grab this free report for yourself, so be sure to check that out. Now let's get started. Number one, people are learning to code via technical documentation. This is good. Now a lot of developers learn to code on Udemy and other sites like that. There's nothing wrong with this, but there really are two types of courses out there. There's one where the teacher teaches you the coding language or framework out of thin air as if you're supposed to remember it all. They give you the definitions and the examples as if they are the source of truth, like you need to come back to their course if you forget something. The other teaches you from the documentation. Maybe they don't actually open the documentation, but they are teaching you from it and pointing you to it. The best courses will teach you the material from the source so that you can also visit there when you can't remember content from the 79 hours you just watched. Being a developer who can navigate documentation overall is a superpower. And I say overall because you'll often be asked to use new technology of some sorts and feeling confident to jump into documentation and make it work from there is critical. However, when new developers look up documentation, there's a tendency to become completely confused, ditch it, and just Google the answer from some third-party site or now ChatGPT. But forcing yourself to use technical documentation will pay off in multiples. First, many programming languages or frameworks have some sort of introductory tutorial that covers the basics, that walks you through using it and its most common features and terms. Do that first if you're new to it. Take time to understand that complete that first. For example, let's say you're learning Golang. Their site has tutorials, labs, guided journeys that will teach you hands-on specific features of that language from the source. Or a framework like Django has a poll application that teaches you all the basics of Django to get your feet wet. And the links in that tutorial will take you straight to the documentation. Want to learn Docker? Same thing. React? Well, React has a tic-tac-toe game as a tutorial. It also has an entire section called Learn React that really helps with the technical ideas of the library. And some of these tutorials may seem elementary or even boring, but taking time to understand these concepts from the official documentation instead of from third-party blogs is invaluable. And then after you get through the basics, take a few minutes to look at how the docs are structured so that you can reference more deeper, advanced concepts as you need them. Years ago, I was determined to get good at React. I decided to create a note-taking application using only the documentation. And I got got stuck again and again and had to really wrestle with why my code was performing the way it was. Things like, why is use effect being called multiple times? Or how can I cache the result of a calculation between re-renders? Or how can I control all these multiple layers of props that I'm passing around? And usually the documentation goes into depth on all these things. And when you wrestle with these issues and are forced to read how these particular concepts work, it gets burned deeper into your memory and it makes you a better programmer overall. And this is much better than coming across a solution on Stack Overflow saying to use the use ref hook and copying and pasting it without really understanding what it does. Instead, let the Stack Overflow answer lead you to how the documentation defines use ref. All right, second finding, accuracy of AI tools. 61% of developers actively use AI tools and 14 15% plan to, and most were favorable to it. However, like 90% are altogether not able to trust it fully. Even down here in the challenges section, 66% just don't trust the answer or output that it gives at face value. And this is from professional developers. So based on this distrust by professional developers, if you're new and you don't know how to code well or understand the code it's generating for you, or you just plan to copy and paste whatever it generates, it may just get you into more trouble than it will help you. I've heard so many people say, I tried such and such and I couldn't figure it out, so I went to ChatGPT and tried all the things it said and I regenerated the answer a bunch of times to get something different, but I still can't get it to work. Well, that kind of hints that you don't really know what you need to get done here. Learn to code first, such that you can at least evaluate properly what it generates. On the other hand, if you can code well and at least discern what it spits out, then I think it can help you out. 
it has helped me out from time to time. Also, the same sentiment is felt when it comes to complex tasks. AI just isn't there yet for the more difficult things. Like 75% here are on the fence about this capability. So a better use case for it, for now, is for less complex or more menial tasks like converting a lot of JSON to YAML, or to provide starting templates that save you initial steps or outlines to certain functions, or repetitive coding tasks, or to help locate a difficult to pinpoint bug in your code, things like that. And by the way, menial or boring or repetitive work is a great thing for AI to replace. People in call centers, they hate their work. They hate calling people and they hate getting yelled at all day. Sure, it's a job, but it's one that really will make you a miserable person. Just let AI do it. And then finally, most aren't concerned about AI being a threat to their jobs. That's good to know. Number three, JavaScript is still absolutely everywhere. It's the most popular for professional developers. It's third on the list for those learning to code. It's the most popular in web frameworks with Node.js being number one, React number two, jQuery number three, Next.js number four, and then Express, Angular onto Vue. It's also the second most desired language and the top frameworks on the desired list. There's React, Node, Next, Vue, and so forth. And it's not really the language itself, it's the usage of it. It's in everything and used everywhere. And it covers much of the entire front end spectrum alone. And TypeScript follows right behind it in popularity, and I would definitely recommend learning TypeScript to add to your JavaScript, as many, if not most companies are using it. Don't let the whole squabble that happened six months or so ago make you think otherwise. I have a brief video that highlights the benefits if you're new to it, I'll link to it above. Now be warned that the JavaScript ecosystem system is quite vast. When I first learned it, it was largely vanilla and jQuery. When I learned React, it was a great library that allowed easier interactivity and state handling, and you could easily just add it to your app. But now it's much more than an interactive library. We now have server components, and to me, this whole thing has become muddy. So my suggestion in learning it is to get an overview of it all, of course, but find your footing somewhere specific within it, like becoming an expert in the React ecosystem. All right, number four, experience versus roles versus salary. So here's a good reminder for where you may want to enter into this market if you're new. From the respondents here, all 65K or however many there were, roles like front-end dev, mobile dev, data analyst, business Business analyst QA are probably the best entry spots as these positions have fewer years of coding under their belt. A less amount of material is needed to be learned, though I may be a bit hesitant on the mobile dev part. Now developer advocate, developer experience, SRE, these are jobs that require you to know more technology and to have real hands-on experience to perform. Thus, these roles have respondents with more years under their belts. A site reliability engineer will need to know how to code, how to manage servers, automate, set up monitoring, and proper incident management. Management. That takes years. Then roles like full stack, data engineer, and DevOps are in the middle. I would say DevOps is a bit more advanced because they are literally asked to do everything. And then of course, when we look at salaries, the order is almost exactly the same, except in the US, things are a little different. Back end is making big bucks and front end is making more than full stack. And mobile is making even more than back end. We have healthcare cost issues, but make good money here in the US, while other places have great healthcare benefits, but make way less money. What to do? And then number five, only one in five professional developers are actually happy in their current job. And this is individual contributor, not people manager, though the latter is only about 7% better. First of all, I don't see this in last year's survey. Is this new to this year? If not, it would be interesting to see if this is a drastic difference or not. In the top reasons being out of 100 points, improving quality of code in developer environments, that's 21 points, and then learning and using new tech, that's 19 points. And this one's weird because the top five for happy points are also the top five for unhappy points. So what are your thoughts on why 80% of developers are unhappy in their jobs? I'd love to hear about it below. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so, and I'll see you in the next video.